G'day and hello everyone and welcome to Unit 3 on Situation Analysis. I'm recording this lecture from Albury, Wodonga. It's a border town between two states in Australia, New South Wales and Victoria, and where the Hume Dam is actually situated. That's the one that you can see in the photo. The dam is the largest and most important dam within the Murray-Darlin Basin, which is Australia's food bowl. And it was originally constructed to bring water security to the downstream water users along the length of Australia's longest river, the mighty Murray River. This is a region where the majority of Australia's food is grown using irrigated agriculture with water stored from this dam. The region has prospered because of it, but as with any infrastructure and change of land and water regimes, it's come at a cost to the what was the natural environment. Now, the dam, it also provides a myriad of other services than its original intention, such as recreation on the lake, fishing opportunities below the lake, which are actually for an introduced species, brown and rainbow trout, and that's actually due because now the dam releases water from the bottom, which is much colder than it was naturally. Towns and farms along the, the river downstream, they're now used to a certain way of water releases, that come from the dam that have been in place for over the last 50 years. So how would you, if you're an environmental water manager, how would you develop an environmental water flow program that would possibly change all of this? Well, if it was me, I'd start with a comprehensive situation analysis. And this forms the basis of today's lecture. Conducted properly, and you're well on the way to gaining the three fundamentals for better implementation of eFlows. Why do a situation analysis? Conducting a situation analysis is a crucial step. Sometimes we refer to it as step zero. And it's a crucial step in any eFlows program. Context is so important in being able to understand the situation in which you intend to implement an eFlows program. Now while it may be easy to understand your own situation in your own country, or at least you think you do, conducting a comprehensive situation analysis, it'll be able to help you explicitly see the linkages between the different system components, their current state, and then you will have a much clearer way forward for your eFlows program. In addition, as eFlow specialists, we are often asked to conduct eFlow assessments and devise eFlow programs around many different parts of the world. And as every situation is unique, without a sound understanding of the context of the river basin in question, we may get to the stage where we're able to conduct an environmental flow assessment but the chances of it being implemented and institutionalised by the in-country water managers and communities is relatively low. There are many examples where situation analyses have been done, and they've been done poorly, especially from the social side, and is certainly one of the reasons why implementation and institutionalisation has not occurred in many situations. What parameters to consider? Although there are many parameters you should consider in a situation analysis, it makes it easier if you break them down into some main groupings. And we suggest about approximately these five groups. You as the proponent, or the one that has been asked to devise the eFlows program, must first understand why eFlows for this particular basin. So why are you doing it? And as importantly, who wants it? as depending on who and how the idea for an eFlows program came around or came about is very important. Understanding the social, economic and political settings is essential to realistically find an entry point for an eFlows program and actually how the, the whole program will be formulated. Who are the major stakeholders and how they should be engaged that can actually often determine how and if the eFlows program will be accepted. How the governance structures are set up influences the whole decision making in the basin and also then influences your eFlows program. 
Understanding the state and the condition of the water resources is needed. And this will help you to assess what is the current condition and are you in a protection mode of flows or are you in a restoration mode and so therefore give you a way forward. Why eFlows for this situation? Why you are conducting an eFlows program in a basin is an important question to understand from yourself before you get to understand the basin itself. Conducting eFlows under a fully supported and enacted government program such as part of a water allocation pro, uh, process, is very different from an eFlows program that has been initiated in a country by someone like an NGO or an external donor funder. Depending on the situation of this, the why eFlows, this may direct resources of your program into different areas. For example, you may want to invest more resources into an engaging with the government if your eFlows program is NGO funded compared to one that is actually funded from the government itself. If it's a relicensing of a hydropower plant, then your engagement may be actually situated around the hydropower company, and that will become very important. Understanding the why eFlows in relation to your basin will help you to direct your resources to the areas that are most likely to help with your implementation and your institutionalization. The social, economic and political settings, these are at the centre of how everything is structured and operates in a basin. This has important implications for your eFlows program. For example, the values and the reliance on the water bodies within the basin will be very different between a wealthy developed country and a poorer developing country. And this should influence the way in which the eFlows program is structured. E-flows within a hierarchy or political system will be very different from a more horizontal, devolved decision-making system. This understanding needs to be carefully mapped out. May be related to things such as health and population, so the physical and the mental health, the diseases that are occurring, and population growth. Will be related to uh, to wealth, economy, the income, material goods, food, water, clothing, and shelter that's within the catchment or the basin itself, the knowledge and the culture of the system, the different communities, their rights, freedoms, governments, institutions, and also around looking at things such as equity. How equal is it amongst poorer, richer, middle class people? And then also what are the technology, what are the techn technological capabilities within the basin? Governance. Another logical component to include in the situation analysis is examining the decision making process and the legal and institutional framework for the determination and protection of environmental flows. Environmental flows may be explicitly mentioned in national, state or provincial laws or, more commonly, they will not be mentioned explicitly but they may be required to achieve other objectives of the law such as ecosystem or biodiversity protection. Who and how the basin is managed and the organisational structure for who makes the decisions and how is also very critical. This also helps in identifying key stakeholders needed in the process. It helps to identify the institutions with the specific responsibilities or a prominent role in environmental flows, determinations, the enforcement. And it's really important at the beginning of a project that the participation of these institutions should be facilitated throughout. Stakeholders. It is very important to identify all stakeholders with an interest in the eFlows process or others who can actually influence the process. Looking into what are the stakeholders' interests, expectations and influence on the programs is very much needed. Primary stakeholders are the people who depend directly on the resource or are in charge of managing it. Secondary stakeholders do not necessarily depend on the resource directly but have a high interest and possibly influence on the process. Other key stakeholders are people or institutions 
that can significantly influence the success of the program. The success of any program ultimately relies on the willingness of the different stakeholders to accept the outcomes and then want to support the implementation and the institutionalization of the e-flows both into their management and their community structures. So the state and the condition of the resource. A fundamental aspect of any situation analysis for environmental flow assessments begins with a basic description of the river basin where the e-flows process will be developed and the characteristics listed here are a very general context and all of these should be included and you should do it in a written form and you can also use mapping to help you to do this. So maps are a particularly useful tool for illustrating the spatial context of a project and presenting the relevant basin characteristics and associated data. This map shows the major tributaries, reservoirs and cities in the Orange Sangu Basin of South Africa. The actual images come from the Orange Sangu River Awareness Kit and it's a resource that can be looked up and actually helps to really illustrate the way that it can be displayed in maps. So determining the current state of the use of the water resources is needed to know whether you might be in a situation of things such as over abstraction, whether you're in a highly efficient or inefficient system using water, whether there's industrial agriculture or it's a subsistence agricultural system, what are the pollution sources? And even though eFlows is about determining the quantity and quality of water, it's important to note the other factors that may affect the outcomes of an eFlows program. So non-flow non -flow related issues. This may be such things as overfishing. So then regardless of the flow regime that you put in place, fish populations will probably not reach their set targets. And it's very important to know this and to be able to explicitly state it. Considering trends, in addition to describing the current status of people and resources in the basin, it's important to identify trends in development and resource use that may impact the environmental flows program into the future. There may be plans in place to increase water resource use to meet such things as a rapidly growing population, or plans to reduce water usage through such things as efficiency programs. The future has to be considered if there is available information on it about what is being planned and what you think may occur into the future. So questions to ask yourself during the process. Reflection during the process is important and there are a series of questions you should ask yourself when conducting a situation analysis to make sure that it's an efficient and effective process. So documenting the process also helps for reflection and revision as the process continues so that you can go back again and see that the new information that you've gained, whether it's the same as the available information you had at the time. So the take home messages. Basically, a situation analysis is an essential first step of any eFlows program. And it allows for the context of which you want the eFlows to be implemented to be better understood to help you to try and address the problems that are occurring and from the start do it in an explicit and transparent manner. There are many situation analysis tools available and these are being explained in the next lecture.